On today's Question of Faith, what is a Eucharistic Revival? Hey everybody, I'm Mike Hayes, and this is Question of Faith. I'm the Young Adult Ministry Director in the Diocese of Cleveland. I'm Father Damian Ferentz, the Vicar for Evangelization. And I am Francine Costantini, Director of Youth Ministry. Woohoo! Woohoo! Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, by the way, congratulations on uh, your husband, Mike, becoming a deacon. Thank uh, you. Like we, I don't think he was a deacon the last time you were here, so uh, congratulations, deacon's wife. And... Yes, it, big change. Yeah? Big change for our whole family. Cool. Speaking of big changes, Eucharistic Revival is here. That's it. So we're, this is a special episode today, trying to drum up some attention and interest in a big event happening June 11th here in the Diocese of Cleveland. Um, there's a greater umbrella of Eucharistic revival taking place uh, across the whole country and all the dioceses in the United States. Uh, this, I think, is a response to a USCCB gathering a few years ago when uh, a Pew Research report stated that a very small amount, I I guess not very small, but what was that, 30% or something, 27% of people believed. Just a third of the people, so yeah. Believed in the real presence in the Eucharist. Now, there's some debate over how that question was answered. Regardless, it seems that it's a good time to re-educate, re-catechize, re-evangelize people about the great gift of the Eucharist, the Blessed Sacrament. So we are kicking off the Eucharistic revival here in the Diocese of Cleveland on the same day that we're closing our pre-synodal participation in the Synod on Synodality. So there'll be a whole gathering on uh, June 11th down at Public Hall, and then the closing Mass of the Synod is 4.30 at the Cathedral, which is the opening Mass for the Eucharistic revival. Right. And all are welcome. Anyone's invited. And at the end of that Mass, there will be a Eucharistic procession down Superior to St. Peter's Church on the corner of 17th and Superior. Just a few blocks away. Yeah. It takes – I don't know how long it will take. If you're walking by yourself, it probably takes seven or eight minutes. With a group, probably 15 to 20. Sure. Maybe longer. But um, we've got a few seasoned musicians in the diocese who have done praise and worship for many, many years, Jeff Botis and and Danny O'Brien. And then uh, one of our up-and-comers, Elizabeth Gonzalez, uh, will be joining them in leading praise and worship. Bishop Molesic will be presiding, and yours truly will be preaching that night. It's going to be sweet. Yeah, it's going to be and it's going to be fun like just just walking down the street in procession I think. I think I think you know I always like those kinds of things. And I think in in this instance it'll be great to kick it off with a great sort of public show of our love of the Eucharist. So Yeah. And it it comes right off of the image of for the Synod on Synodality which is a church that's journeying together. Yeah. So here we are publicly journeying together from one church to another from the cathedral to St. Peter's. And uh, two very different spaces, but also two very um, unique spaces for worship. And uh, Francine, maybe you could talk a little bit about how, if you've been to an exalt before, sometimes there's a lot of lights and um, some sometimes drums and louder music, more instrumentation, how this is going to be a little different. So an exalt, sometimes people call it XLT. Essentially, it's Eucharistic adoration with praise and worship music. And so St. Peter is a, is a smaller church, and it doesn't need a whole lot of sound for right. um, the, the music to travel. So it's going to be more of a, of a quieter acoustic type set. Um, so there'll be guitars and keyboard is, will be the two main instruments and vocals. Um, an intimate setting. An intimate mm-hmm. setting, yes. And there'll be an opportunity. So obviously um, the bishop will be there and he'll bring Jesus in the monstrance um, up to the altar. And then the church will fill in from everyone walking from the procession. We'll follow um, the bishop into the church. And and then we will just have that opportunity to adore our Lord in the Eucharist. Um, so there will be... There will be times of silence. There will be times of praise and worship music. At the end, um, after benediction, after divine praises and the Eucharist is reposed, there will most likely be a few upbeat songs, uh, more of the contemporary Christian type of variety of song, Mm. and then we will head outside for a social afterwards. Yeah, that's where I come in. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 300 hot dogs and hamburgers. That's it. 300 hot dogs and 300 hamburgers. That's right. 600 pieces of meat. 
And cookies. <laughs> and yes. cookies. And it, and, and <laughs> she it, really wants us. I cookies. really want the cookies. Yes. And if you're a vegetarian, we'll take care of you. We'll have, you know, the little garden burgers and things like that as, as well. So and some salads. Don't panic. And some salads, yes, of course. Sure. Yeah. We're all Gen Xers. There's no secret there. I'm thinking um, in terms of this music, do you remember in the 90s when MTV first started doing mm-hmm. Unplugged, MTV Unplugged? Right. Yes. So you could really see what a band can do because when they got the auto tuning and all the synths and the pedals, it's like, wow, they sound cool. If you can do that with just uh, acoustic guitars, you could really show off what you have. And in some sense, the the music will be more the the noble simplicity you know the second vatican council at um at saint peter's and although it is a smaller church the ceilings are rather high yes. and the voices carry and i know when we did night prayer there with the young adult community they were like oh my gosh the acoustics in here are so good so the idea of like good liturgical music is not performance it's to lead so that mm-hmm. everybody can hear themselves singing and then want to sing more you know so i'm i'm really looking forward to it. i'm very excited about about it. Yeah, and after you preach, um, you're going to be inviting folks up around the altar to come close and come closer to Jesus. Yeah, and sit come and, let us adore worship. Him. So right. it'll be cool. Yeah, yeah, and the seating there is choir style, right? So it is. So people will face each other. So we are the body of Christ. Also, there's that motif going on. Uh, you know, Jesus is in the Eucharist, but also we receive the Eucharist, become what we receive, and that's also a good symbol of us going forth from the. From the Synod into the Eucharistic Revival as well. Yeah. And so I think when we start, the exalt will be, I don't, I don't even know if we'll have enough seats, but that's okay. One yeah. of the things that I've been thinking about a lot lately is since COVID, it's like we've, we've practiced so much social distancing, and rightly so, to prevent disease from spreading. But at the same time, it's really nice to be tight. In a, in a community with a lot of people and be back together, one body again. So the, the Liturgy of the Word will will be um, in one section and then we'll kind of uh, move our, our attention then toward the altar for the then the adoration aspect of that, that holy hour. Right. And, cool. and so it'll all start with the Mass at the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist, and that'll be at uh, 4.30. Right? Bishop Molesic presiding, Bishop Molesic preaching. Yep. Very nice. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then from there, we'll, we'll go out the doors and then down uh, Superior, which is about, was it eight blocks? Yeah. Yeah, the back end is what, 12th Street to 17th Street. But if you start at 9th, which we're not starting at 9th because <laughs> we're coming out of the side door. Right. So, yeah, it's probably about... Five yeah. to eight blocks, depending yeah. on where you begin. Exactly. Yeah. And depending on how long the Eucharistic procession takes, we expect um, the exalt to start around 6.15 or so. Right. Yeah. And so plenty of parking and all those kinds of things. Look around. We'll, we'll, we'll be sounding we'll – be, I'll put this in the show notes, like where you should park and things along those lines because it can get a little confusing down around that area. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's what we've been told, at least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we, there's, we have reserved parking. We don't, yeah. you know, we don't know these things. There's a um, – there's, we're going to have a, uh, a Baldacchino, Baldacchino yes. with just a, you, a canopy for, um, un, for the monstrance to walk underneath. And it's, a, it's an old one. And, um, Is Father Holinsky? Father Holinsky is okay. bringing it. Okay. And, yeah. um, so I, it's going to be beautiful. I just, I, and we have a, a, a banner with our, um, our Eucharistic Revival logo on it. And it's, it's going to be great to show who we are. Catholics. I don't remember the name in Spanish, but it's a flower carpet that the Hispanic community is going to make on the front. Um, sidewalk of St. Peter's, and you actually step over it, you walk over it. So Brother Phil said we could do it as long as we clean up afterwards, but they'll do some sort of image out of flower petals. Oh, wow. So that's what we'll walk in that way. It'll be really cool. I've seen that a couple of times at Sagrada Familia. It's, just, it's really beautiful, yeah. So this will be fun. Yeah. I and mean, we're looking forward to it. You know, it's, it's the kind of thing where uh, – you know, we don't do these kinds of things all the time, so it's a special kind of an event for us to kind of get together. Number one, and and two, for us to really talk about, you know, well, what what do we believe? You know, how often do we stand together as one body in Christ? You know, and so this is this is an opportunity for us to do that and to kick off this year of the Eucharist uh, here in the diocese. And I, I think it's important to note that this 
Eucharistic revival is not just for this year. It goes until 2025. And so this first year that launches this summer will be the year of the diocesan Eucharistic revival. And we'll have diocesan events throughout the year. And then next summer will be the year of the um, parish Parish. Eucharistic revival, where parishes will um, dive into the reality of the Eucharist more. And then in um, July of 2024, there's a National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, um, which is going to be an amazing event. And and that will launch the year of going out on mission, which will take place until Pentecost of 2025. So this is a three-year kind of deal going on, and we're kicking it off right now here in Cleveland, right? We're doing it. We're doing it. So again, starts at the diocese, goes into the parishes from there, and then there'll be a National Eucharistic uh, Congress in, uh, in July of 2024. And then uh, that leads us into going out for a year on mission from 2024 to 2025, ending on Pentecost. Yeah, we've got some other ideas to do during this year. One of the things Francine and I talked about was doing an intergenerational exalt, mm-hmm. maybe going to one of our Catholic nursing homes and bringing teens there and praying with them, doing some of the hymns that they knew and some of the songs that the younger people know, and then getting the intermingling taking place. So there's a lot of cool things happening. But for now, please come out on Saturday, June 11th, for 4.30 Mass at the Cathedral, then a procession down Superior, and a Exalt at St. Peter's Church on 17th and Superior, followed by a little picnic. Right. With 300 hot dogs, 300 hamburgers, and an uncertain amount of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> cookies. Gotta Those are always cookies. good. Exactly. And so uh, if you're uh, if you're around, please join us for that. And then, uh, of course, go to church. You know, one of the readings that you'll hear at the cathedral if you go to Mass um, will be, actually, you'll hear the sequence because it's Pentecost. Uh, we'll put this in the show notes, but there's any number of choices for the readings this week, so we won't limit ourselves to that. But the I know the Pentecost uh, sequence is one of my favorite things, so I'm glad that we get to hear that this weekend. And you could wear red to Mass if you want to be liturgically proper. That's right. I remember once, you know, we used to do Mass of the Holy Spirit on campus, which was the similar colors we would mm-hmm. use. We would use the red liturgical color. And one of my campus ministers forgot to wear red one time. So we were all in red except her. And of course, yeah, naturally, we all made fun of her. Wow. And she turned around and she was, shut up, guys. I don't make my wardrobe according to the liturgical season. Mm. <laughs> what is wrong with you, then? Exactly. Are you right. even Catholic? nerd (laughs) but it was fun so so come on out on june 11th for mass at 4 30 at the cathedral followed by eucharistic procession down superior and then an exalt at saint peter parish followed by hamburgers hot dogs and cookies a nice catholic social if you mention question of faith you get an extra cookie Ooh! (laughs) in fact if you've listened to this podcast let us know because we'd like to meet you yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That would be great. We'll, we'll all be there. If you have a question of faith, you could email that to me, mhays at org. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or one of those uh, one of those aggregates, please rate and review our podcast. It helps other people get to know who we are and get to know the podcast a little bit better. And so we'll be back again next time here on Question of Faith. 